Welcome back to the channel, everybody. We're just up doing a high mountain adventure. We're roughly just shy of 7,000 feet. Pretty high up, good weather so far. Supposed to get some rain possibly tonight, maybe a little bit tomorrow. Just gonna work my way down to this lake and do a little single man shelter. Have some steak pitas for dinner. So stick around, we'll get going. Alright guys, we're here. Pretty sweet spot. Got the lake behind me. Spin you around, give you a full view. Got some pretty majestic peaks back there. It's going to make for a nice sunset, good sunrise. I'm going to set up camp over here. Actually, let me just spin you around here and I'll show you. Right here between these two trees. I think I'll go ahead and throw my line up there. Got the wind coming in from this direction, so I'll get some partial coverage with my tarp and we'll get going. Here's a close shot of the shelter. Like I said, this is just something I stitched up at home. I was kind of going for a Wheeland style, a modified Wheeland style shelter for a single person. Uh, it has 14 tie outs all along here, each edge and down the middle here. It's 10 ounce army duck canvas with a fire retardant put on it uh, from the factory. Also, you can see it's pretty faded here. I've had this sitting out in the yard probably for about two months in the rain. Last year, just to test it out, I wanted to see how everything would hold up, how the stitching would hold up. So as far as stitching, I did kind of a modified box stitch, uh, reinforced all of the tie outs. They're stitched in and under this extra piece and then box stitched directly over the tie out. And then obviously this piece is reinforced. Uh, I think I went twice around on these reinforcements. I just, I've had cheap stuff that pulls out when I put lots of force on it or the wind rips it out. So I wanted something strong. Uh, but it's held up pretty good. Just used it a few times. We'll see how it does tonight. Alright guys, so here it is, all set up. As you can see, it's pretty low profile, pretty minimalistic. Uh, it's kind of, if you needed to be stealth, it's just got that low horizon, so blends in nicely. Um, that's kind of what I was going for when I made it. I just wanted something that could provide a wind block with these wings kind of spread out on the side, and then that would obviously deflect any rain that we might run into. So I'll give you a quick walk around and we'll get bed set up. All right, quick rundown on the bag and what I've got in here. Uh, start off with sleeping pad down here. I've also got a blow-up sleeping pad inside just for some extra comfort. I knew I'd be out here out on the rocks. Got my Grand Force Brooks axe, raincoat. Uh, up top I had the shelter tied on. Saw that earlier and that was wrapped in this bivy in case it gets really wet tonight. I want to be prepared for that. Sweatshirt. Got my silky saw. Um, always with me. I've got my med kit. Uh, right here. So this is loaded out pretty heavy. I've got some trauma bandages, uh, some quick clot, a couple tourniquets, basic bandages, um, just pretty much what I need to take care of myself. I used to be an EMT, so fairly familiar with what I need to do. Worked on scenes before, so confident how to use this. Uh, make sure you have a first aid kit first thing before you look into gear, get a first aid kit. Uh, over here, I've got my fire kit, kind of tight in here. These are both uh, Van Quest gear. Actually, all this is Van Quest gear. This is the Trident 35 liter backpack. Uh, now I'm doing some testing on it. I've used it a couple times already. It's been fantastic. I've been using their gear for about eight years now. Uh, everything is really high quality, heavy duty Cordura. Uh, the zippers, YKK, just all top notch stuff. So, either way, uh, I've got these pouches to test out as well. So, I threw my fire kit in here. 
um, up top here. And I'll probably zoom you in for this one. I don't think you'll be able to see it, so I'll show you that in a sec. Um, this is all camera gear inside of here. So this opens up tons of compartments. I've got multiple tripods, my batteries, uh, my backup charging stuff, multiple cameras. So that takes up a good amount of room uh, every time I do these outings. Up front here, there's a secondary pocket. And that's where I, you saw this little pouch. That's what I kept the paracord in. I've got a light in there, um, a couple lights actually in there. Clothes inside, like I said, my pad, uh, sleeping bag, and just kind of the, the normal stuff. Tied on my gloves on the outside. And yeah, just kind of the basics, but probably a heavy loadout for this size of bag, but I always bring too much stuff. So let me show you each of the compartments here real quick. So here's just a quicker shot showing the inside. Got all this heavy duty webbing. That way you can compartmentalize everything down in here. I'll do a full review on this bag later, but this is just to show. Uh, I got my lights, water filter back here, compass, Leatherman. Little pocket here for my keys, wallet, Bible. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll get that set up. All right, here's a quick walk around. Got bed set up, my bag tucked in there. Plenty of room. We'll kind of spin over here. See if I can keep you steady. Just kind of side profile. See if I can trip over my guy line. So that's kind of what I was talking about there with these wings extending out. And I have them kind of canted towards me. They can cut further this way and have a sharper angle. Threw rocks back there because I couldn't stake out due to the rocks. All right, so now the camp's set up, I can go out and get some wood. There's plenty of down timber all over here, so it's not gonna be a problem. I'll just cut it up with the saw and we'll be good to go. I have just enough for dinner. That's all I really want it for, but man, it is so quiet out here. Beautiful spot. I don't think this does it justice of capturing it all, especially with my lovely filming skills. I'm being sarcastic, by the way. It's dead quiet. All right, I'll check in with you guys in a bit. Whoops, bad placement. At least you guys went along for a ride. thing about cutting all that wood is getting so stinking sweaty. Look at that. Brand new hat and I got it all sweated up. Anyways, comment if you uh, get a new hat and immediately soak it in sweat and ruin it. All right, I got the wood all cut down. Uh, into the sizes I need. Now I'm just going to split it into some links and make some kindling and then do some feather sticks. So, nice thing is that top piece, see if you can see that, left us a little treat for kindling. All that old man's beard on the tip. All right, I'll flip this around here and show you my little fire kit. This guy. All right, so got a lighter, ferro rod, stick of mag uh, with another striker on it. In here, I have an additional lighter, matches, uh, some charred cloth, 
and a striker for the matches. Over here, this is some steel wool and some little pieces of pitch. Uh, back here, we're actually gonna use some of this. This is some fat wood from home. Oh, sorry, let me get you on screen here. If I can get it out, drive you guys crazy. And in this little tin, I've got some fat wood shavings, which we'll use as well. Ooh, that's gold right there. Really fine stuff. And that stuff will all take off. All right, we'll get this fire going. Okay, I've got both cameras going here. So hopefully I can catch all this. I've had notorious problems on the last few trips. Right when I'm striking off the fire off the ferro rod, one of the batteries dies or the camera's out of focus. So I'm really trying to catch it. So we'll get going here. What I just showed you, uh, what I'm using, ferro rod and that tin with the fat wood and then this little piece of fat wood, I'll get some off there. And the knife I'm using is the Tanimboka Puko. This thing is extremely comfortable, very well made. I'm just out testing it for the first time today. Uh, but the grip and everything is just amazing. So it's based off a of traditional Puko, but they kind of put their spin on it. Um, it's got a little bow drill spot here on either side. Show that on this camera too, right there. And the way they rounded off these handles just makes it incredibly comfortable. I can get a good grip, a good bite. Uh, it's got a very sharp edge there on the back side, so it throws perfect sparks. Anyways, so thanks to the Tops guys for letting me try this out. And like I've said in other videos, I don't go for perfect fancy feather sticks. I'm usually trying to catch time with the sun going down and getting the fire going and I just make what works. So just nice gapping in the wood to catch lots of oxygen. I feel like I slurred that. Catch lots of oxygen uh, and it just needs that surface area to get going. See that? There's a dummy move. I had my finger sticking forward. That's how sharp this thing is. My knuckle was just in the path as I was coming down. And like a dummy, I didn't put my glove on. So that's why. You wear gloves and you don't stick your finger in the path of the knife. The thing is extremely sharp. Just barely nicked it and just punch, punched a little hole. But the bevel of this knife makes this extremely easy to get down and just get these scrapings. There's maybe one more here and I think we're good. Actually, we'll see if I can get some fine shavings off the back. Even though I have that tin, I just like saving as much as I can. All right. And I do have bandages, so we'll take care of that here in a second. 
actually I'll pause. I'll be right back as soon as I put a bandage on. And that is why you have a first aid kit. It's all this big trauma stuff is probably unlikely to happen, but it's these little annoying cuts done out of stupidity. They'll just drive you crazy because they just bleed all over and make a mess. So there you go. Fancy little bandage. Back at it. All right, let's see if we can get a strike here. that away before I stick myself again. All right, let this cook up a bit, and then we'll get dinner going. Temperature's just starting to drop, so we'll see if I need that bivy bag that I brought. That's why, well, not just for rain, but I also brought it for some insulation. Well, really just to trap the heat in, so. This is a very thin summer bag, so I think it's supposed to get down to somewhere in the 40s. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I'm right around 7,000 feet, so I imagine it's going to get cold quick. But it got very warm today. It's just that time of year where it fluctuates like crazy. Forgot to show you guys this little pocket on the pack, because that is where I have this guy. And yes, a frying pan. I know you're probably thinking, geez, doesn't that dig into your back? But it does not. There's this very thick cushioning back here. So anyways, there you go. All right, so dinner is made. We're gonna have, whew, so I'm getting embers shot on me. Steak, onion, tomato, pitas. So we'll see how messy it gets. Hopefully this is coming out. Um, I got this Lucy light here and then these new Lucy lights uh, that they sent over. And these guys just click on. We've got three levels to them. So pretty handy. They actually go on the tent pegs uh, that I showed earlier. Yeah, it's just kind of a show your campground area so you don't trip on the lovely guy lines and then they can also hang on strings so pretty handy anyways we'll get going with this guy now the question is do i have one or two i usually just don't eat that much on outings but this looks pretty delicious Say a quick prayer. Amen. All right. 
right into this. That is much better than I thought. That's amazing. Well, keeping those tomatoes uncooked and then grilling the onions with the steak. Man, that's delicious. Put down in the comments what your favorite camp food is. I'm just not a big eater, so every so often I get something like this that just kind of surprises me. I usually don't like going through the or ordeal of cutting up anything and making a mess, but yeah, this is this is good stuff. So yeah, put down below what you normally eat if you're just a regular hot dogs guy or gal, or if you go all out and you're the uh, camp chef. All right, I'm ready to hit the hay. Been out screwing around with my camera, trying to get some night shots. Uh, the moon just popped out and it's very bright. Almost full moon, uh, plenty warm. Just watching this fire go down. And uh, I'll touch base with you guys in the morning unless something crazy happens. Oh, that was a incredibly large, I don't know what that is. Anyways, I'm pretty beat, so we'll see you in the morning. Good night. All right, well, good morning. It is just past five. Um, I had to get up to go see a man about a horse, so I'm pretty much awake now anyways. Off and on through the night, it got pretty chilly, uh, so I ended up throwing on the waffle top and bought him this uh, military surplus stuff. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I always have with me for my sleep, sleep system, my beanie. But yeah, just off and on a few times through the night, about, about each hour. The fire, I just kept feeding it all night. There was just enough wood. I ended up needing it all. Um, I think it's been going since about seven or so is when I started it last night. So about 10 hours, pretty good. This wood's pretty dense. So now I think I'm just gonna sit and enjoy the fire. It's definitely cool. The winds picked up and the uh, barometer dropped a lot. So it's, uh, it's on its way. Hopefully it doesn't rain before I pack up and I'm not doing the rain pack out, but whatever, we'll deal with it. Uh, hopefully we'll catch the sunrise and get uh, some good shots for you guys here, but check back in here in a bit. Otherwise I'm just gonna zone out and stare at the fire for a while. <laughs> Cause I'm still pretty out of it. Alright guys, camp's all broke up, uh, the rain just kicked in, I got out of here just in time so as you can see it's starting to come down. So I am going to get out of here, get the rest of my pack set up and uh, hit the road. So appreciate you sticking around, like and subscribe if you enjoyed, share it, uh, it all helps out the channel so yeah, we'll catch you next time. Leave some comments for what you'd like to see next time as well, that helps out. Thanks guys.